Hello everyone, so my next requested video, and this was a video that I really wanted to do anyway because it links very much to my Pinnacles video. So if you haven't already watched my video on the Pinnacles, please do so first because these challenge numbers are linked directly with your Pinnacles and each challenge number that we calculate is linked to one of your Pinnacles as you'll figure out as we go along. Now this video is for one of my lovely subscribers. This is for you, Rachel. So um, let me know what you think of this video about the challenge numbers. Let's go. So... What are challenge numbers? So, knowing your challenge numbers and how they interrelate with your pinnacles is quite vital. So, you need to understand that the challenge number indicates that you'll be challenged with the negative or destructive elements of the number that, uh, of your challenge number. So, to embrace and act upon the positive is what you want to start doing. Now, to put that into plain English, you could have a pinnacle, say my pinnacle one was three, but my challenge number was one. So I showed I had all the energy of the three around me in my pinnacle three, which was my first pinnacle, the energy of the three in my first pinnacle, but my the energy of struggle and channel a challenge in my first pinnacle was the energy of the one. So that made me often overshadowed by other people or sometimes overly aggressive. But I'm going to talk to you about the challenge number one in a moment. But each pinnacle that you calculate, there's a challenge number with that that's going to help you. You're, with that challenge number, you're going to express more the negative side of that number. OK, when it's a challenge number one and you're working towards embracing the more positive elements of your challenge number. OK, so they're not meant to be overcome so much as they they indicate what you've got to work towards, what you must become. Because remember, that life path is the most important thing. But helping yourself through these challenge numbers and showing more the positive um, elements of your challenge numbers is going to help you towards your life path no end but it's always worth and it's very important that you correlate your challenge number with your pinnacle number to be able to see what the energy is going to be like for the whole of that pinnacle and have a, a good idea of what those difficulties in in your challenge number might entail so that you can work towards the more positive elements of that challenge number to help your life path so it's, it's not that they're meant to be like put as a, a big thing and overcome as a big thing. That's your life path. You know, your focus should be your life path. And Rachel, I hope you're following your passions in your life path and not allowing other people to take your energy away. <laughs> so challenge numbers are not meant to be overcome. It's your life path that's important. But they indicate something that would help you to achieve, you know, that, that you can become to help you achieve your life path. Okay. After all that gabble, I'll move on. So calculating your challenge numbers is like calculating your pinnacles exactly the same. But instead of adding those numbers together, we're minusing them. So pinnacle one is calculated day plus month. So challenge one is calculated day minus month. Now, it doesn't matter if, the, if one number is bigger than the other. If the month is bigger than the day, swap it round. There's no negative numbers in numerology. OK, so it doesn't have to be day minus month. It could be month minus day, whatever gives you that positive number. There's no minus numbers in numerology. So if the day is bigger, you do day minus month um, for the first challenge. And for challenge two, it will be your day minus your year and so on, as you can see on the screen. So it's exactly the same way as pinnacles are calculated, if you watch my pinnacle video, but instead of plusing these numbers together, we're minusing them. So for example, okay, full date of birth, 29th of the 10th, 1975. So challenge one, because that person is a life path seven, their challenge one, like their pinnacle one, goes from zero to 29 years, and their day minus their month is one. OK, as you can see, I've worked out the pinnacle number and all the sums for the challenge numbers for the birth date, 29th of the 10th, 1975. And the only difference between this calculation and the pinnacles is I've minused instead of plussed. OK, it's the only difference. So my challenge number or the challenge number for this date of birth is number one. 
which is me. Yeah, that's my date of birth. OK, so my challenge numbers throughout my life are going to be one, then two, then one again. And then finally, my last pinnacle, I'm going to have a challenge with the three. OK, so challenge number zero, which you can have. You know, because if you have a day that's nine and a month that's nine, when you take one from the other, you get zero, right? So the zero is quite a good challenge number to have, actually. Um, it's a challenge of choice because it's not a particularly, it's not a challenge, really. The challenge zero means you don't have a challenge. So you get to choose what you're going to work on in this lifetime. That Whatever supports your life path would be good. So it's a challenge of choice. And sometimes it can feel more confusing and difficult because you don't know what to work on when you don't have any particular difficulties, you know, but you, you know, you can struggle to know what to work on. But when you're a challenge number zero, you're quite an old soul. Um, so the zero is challenging um, in a way that it's hard for you to make decisions and you have to have the utmost faith in your own ability to make a choice and but then act on that choice too sometimes the zero challenge number you can make a choice but you don't always act on that choice um, but your greatest challenge um with no challenge <laughs> is making a decision because no one's telling you which way to go when it comes to things you need to develop apart from your life path so you can choose but it's then making the decision and sticking to it that's going to be your challenge, but not a challenge, if you know what I mean. So you can compare, analyze and come up with a solution, but you're not always able to turn that solution into action. You know, you've got to develop more faith in your ability to analyze the situation and make a strong, definitive decision and trust it, you know, and learn to stick to that choice and not keep changing your mind because you're inherently unsure. A decision has got to be made. You know, even though you don't have a ch challenge in the zero, you do because you've got so much choice. It's hard to make that choice. So that's your challenge at the end of the day. You know, and when a decision isn't made, you can choose to be lazy, a bit directionless. You can grab this profound opportunity to rise above your demons and achieve greatness. But, you know, if you don't feel you need to, you might not. So if you haven't got any challenges, you can still work on challenges in your life. You can still develop yourself further because that can only make you greater than you are today. You must have some sense of mastery over the constructive aspects of all the other numbers because you're quite an old soul when you've got a challenge zero. And you're, you're, you're quite like a nine in that you're quite multifaceted. It's hard to make a decision or focus on any one thing. Um, you have opportunities for you to use your amazing intuitive wisdom during this lifetime that's linked to you being an old soul. And it's important that you use this old soul energy very wisely and fiercely. So it's making decisions when you're a challenge, challenge number zero because you don't have a challenge at the end of the day. But that doesn't mean you haven't got elements to, to make better, to develop. It's about making a choice on what element you are going to make better and sticking to it is your challenge when you don't have a challenge. In the zero <laughs> so challenge number one is a challenge like all the other numbers so the challenge number one is it's important that you don't allow people to stand in your way okay naysayers or aggressive authoritarian people that could be brothers sisters parents or even your boss or even friends in your life or family members so it's important that you don't allow these naysayers to stand in your way and deflate your innovative vision you know you feel suppressed you often feel dominated remember you're challenged by the difficult elements of the one so you might feel suppressed and dominated by more influential and powerful people in your life you know, as I said, the dominators are often parents or others you feel overshadowed by in your life. So it could be older brothers and sisters. You must learn to sidestep and pull away when you're being dominated, but without aggression. You know, it's not about hitting back and biting. It's about pulling away and not allowing it, but not fighting back with aggression because you're being called upon to stand up for yourself, be more authentic, more independent and self-reliant. You know, and you've got to trust yourself to do that and not allow um, an overpowerful um, overshadower to to take your fire, really. 
You know, you're, you're truly being called upon to step up to the plate and become that leader that you can be in this lifetime. You know, this isn't going to become easy and you're going to have to cultivate those leadership qualities, especially if you've been overshadowed all your life, which is likely when you're a challenge one. You know, you've got to trust your vision. You've got to hone your people's skills. You've got to achieve effectiveness and get the job done. Um, you must keep your cool, rely on yourself to find solutions to your problems. That's the element of independence that you need to keep really inside you. You're learning about self-reliance, how to solve your own problems, um, relying on and trusting on your own abilities and your own intelligence and your own inner compass. Follow a methodical and logical plan to achieve your own personal success competitiveness and overwhelming need to achieve could be a bit of a problem so it's really important that you keep your ego in check um, learn to control your sometimes destructive nature aggressive and know-it-all tendencies that you can have in the challenge number one um, shed that arrogance that you could have with the challenge number one pretentiousness being a bit selfish being a bit vain the life part the challenge number one and the life path one and the energy of the one can be very vain um, self-justifying resentful um, and this can this will only be a problem for you if you let resentment sort of feed its way through your life because it's going to make you frustrated and angry um, you need to be more gentler, not angry, more gentler with your behavior towards others. Learn to be able to avoid being self-righteous, confrontational, and quarrelsome, and downright aggressive, which the challenge one can sometimes make you. Cultivate your confidence. You know, you have major and minor bouts of insecurity when you have a challenge number one, and you can become very, very emotionally needy, which can lead to ill health and frustration. So you're looking towards then going towards the more positive elements of the number one, which is confidence and leadership and independence and get up and go and initiation, but also the ability to work in a calm, emotional manner around others. So those are the more positive elements of the challenge one that you're working towards. But when you're a challenge number two, it's sort of the opposite of the one. So you're very emotional. These are your challenges. You're very emotional, sometimes oversensitive, and you can drop down quickly, like go down really fast, very quickly. You've got to learn to let go and not take everything to heart. And the development of your sensitivity to all your relationships and seeing other people's point of view and everyone else's side of the argument is very much needed for you because you've got to understand you have some destructive aspects to your sensitivity and you need to, to strive towards the more constructive aspects of your sensitivity. And the, what I mean by that is you can be sensitive and volatile, or you can be sensitive and use that to your advantage. Sensitive to read other people and read their needs before they even know it so that you can help them. You know, there's a positive way to be sensitive and a negative way to be sensitive. So understanding those destruct these destructive elements of your sensitivity is really useful you should be able to take your sensitive nature and in your stride and use your keen in sensitivities as a strength as i just said you are attuned to other people's feelings don't forget your psychic armor though because you know there are always energy vampires out there and when you're a healer or a giver you know you've got to make sure you protect yourself because people some people will take what you're giving and more and completely exhaust you in every way so you're not able to work easily in a team because you fear being criticized, disregarded. You know, you can be a bit emotional and a bit of a drama queen. Um, you depend too much on the opinions of others when you should be looking at your own intuition. And you sometimes judge yourself according to other people's opinions, which isn't helpful at all. You'll be challenged by basing your actions and decisions on what other people think and say about you. This is going to be an, a reoccurring challenge throughout your life until you start looking into your own intuition and trusting your own inner compass rather than the opinions of everyone else around you. Which, you know, what do they know about your life? Just saying. <sighs> so you need a more positive connection and faith in your intuition get past that nagging paranoid worry that other people are judging you in some way um 
or worried about what others say about you. You know, at the end of the day, it's what your inner compass and your intuition says that matters anyway. So your intuition and awareness with your friendships can be a strength for you if you use it positively. Um, you find it difficult to be assertive when you're a two challenge number. Um, you make decisions on your own or to take charge. That can be difficult. You don't like making decisions on your own. And you certainly don't like taking char charge when you have difficulties in the two energy. You'll always experience tests around working with fear, not standing up for yourself, um, which you need to do in your challenge to um, struggling with lack of self-confidence. You know, you need to be able to learn to take control of yourself and also to lead other people in a very responsible way. You must assert yourself more, make more decisions that are from your own intuition and your own inner compass. You know, don't shy away from responsibility or authority. You know, use your intuition and your own inner compass and your self-belief to help you to lead. You have that ability to do so. You can be stubborn, stubborn, defensive, self-absorbed, yeah, and angry, drama queen, um, irrational sometimes, and be a bit unfair in your action, um, especially if you're feeling resentful. If you feel that you've done too much for other people, you can feel a bit resentful. If you feel unacknowledged or no one says, no one says thank you, um, you know, for things you do for others, you know. And that can cause the two challenge or the energy of the two to cause you that challenge in your lifetime. So find balance be between giving to others constructively and giving to yourself so that you keep yourself healthy and full of well-being. You're here to work with the energies of harmony, cooperation, diplomacy, but also to look after yourself as well. So the challenge number two can struggle with being walked on a little bit, the overwork, people taking advantage of you, and you getting a bit over emotional sometimes and a bit of a drama queen. So there's many things for you to work with there if the two is a challenge in your life. Challenge number three. So you have a lot of talents, okay, and you're for writing and acting and speaking, yet your challenge number three makes you reluctant to to express yourself in any way because you're worried about criticism. You you're shy, and despite having the talent and the creativity and the gift of the gab, if you've got three in your chart. You're unable to express it because of you. You just got no belief in yourself when you're a challenge number three. So you often feel blocked. So when you want to express yourself effectively and honestly, this can be blocked by your emotions or you can't say what you need to say or your emotions take over and you don't say what you need to say. You might hide your creative talents behind that facade of withdrawal and shyness and low confidence and feeling that other people are against you in some way you know the challenge number three can make you quite depressive um, you're unable to excel at any specific talent because you've got you know you try your hand at loads and loads of different things but struggle to focus on any one thing enough to take it or progress it any further you might feel the compulsion to do too many things at once because you haven't really found any focus or passion in your life you may bury your head in the sand and bury your head in a general depression or malaise that you can't seem to shake, or oh, not for long anyway. So the, the challenge number three can make you quite depressive. Okay, so becoming also, you're a bit of an emotional sponge. You can be negative, defensive, reclusive at times and express yourself negatively with cynicism or judgment or even insulting and hurting other people. You know, sometimes when you have the challenge number of the three, you can be quite hurtful towards other people. You're also in that emotional sponge and experience emotional sensitivity like you would not believe, which can cause you to be quite um, um, explosive with your emotions, which isn't always going to be very helpful to you. Um, you know, you can be like emotionally volatile or just go the other way and completely emotionally shut down, withdrawing and becoming a totally emotionally unavailable. You know, so that's where you struggle. You can go from one side to explosive emotions to completely cutting off your emotions totally. You know, you attempt to get what you want through manipulation when you're showing the negative side of the three. And instead of stating what you want clearly, you manipulate your way towards 
which is interesting. Um, you can be unfriendly, you can be defensive, um, you know you need to socialise, you know that you can socialise, but you feel unable to a lot of the time, and you express yourself negatively in front of others quite a lot, and shy away from showing others your true abilities because of low confidence. You must develop to be able to be more social. You know, you should hone your creative side a little bit more to help you control your emotions and make you feel that little bit happier. You might also have a tendency for money to slip through your fingers at this point in your life. And so you're quite superficial when you have a challenge number three with a tendency to be a bit selfish, uh, moody, scattered. And, you know, you can be quite the exaggerator when you want to be. So you're showing the, the negative aspects of the three. And then you're working towards positive emotional expression and positive social times and networking and positive communication with others. But when your challenge number is three, that's what you're working towards. You're working away from the negative aspects towards the positive aspects of the three. Same with the challenge number four. You've got work-related problems if you have a challenge number four. You struggle to find the right work for yourself when you're a challenge number four. You may not want to work at all. You know, you, you may avoid work or have difficulty with systems, rules and processes and being routined or, you know, doing something every day in repetition. Um, you either struggle to find happiness in your job or you're inefficient or ineffectual in your work. Um, you can find it difficult to focus on your work and your obligations and you often don't even know what your obligations are. Um, you might not feel that you're being lazy because, you know, the four energy loves to make excuses. You know, they make excuses for everything when you've got the real strong elements of the four challenge. Uh, you're meant to learn about the value of discipline, organization, practicality, hard work and thrift. And as you can imagine, those are all a difficulty when you have a challenge number four because you can be undisciplined, disorganized, it's totally impractical and you can be lazy at the end of the day and you know I'm, I'm not sure about thrift i think four likes to have security so again that might be a little bit of a wibble wobble if you struggle to gain security so learn how to succeed and work within established restrictions limitations policies and procedures slow down create a clear plan with obtainable specific goals and then work tirelessly with perseverance to achieve them. You're going to struggle with all of this if you have a challenge number four. So your, your competence and your commitment to, you, to your work needs to be improved if you want to be successful. You tend to be careless, um, lack a sense of practicality at times, undependable and forgetful, uncommitted, disorganized, lazy, irresponsible. Um, making the same mistakes repeatedly. These are all the negative elements of the four energy. You must learn the importance of working within the parameters of a, of a, of a time schedule as well, getting things done within a certain time. Learn to turn up on time or when you say you're going to. Uh, managing your downtime constructively and not wasting time continuously. Learning to complete a task within a given time frame is also important for you. Um, learn patience, understanding, and the practical and effective way to deal with routine and mundane tasks so that you can actually share the workload and not be lazy. Um, you must learn to temper your impatience. Oh, you can be impatient. You can be extremely stubborn, extremely narrow-minded, and diabolically self-righteous when you're a challenge number four. And you can allow your relationships within your family to, uh, to influence your decisions quite negatively in your life. So you need to guard against that and use your relationship with your family as a learning point rather than something to be negative about. Feelings of discouragement and confusion often result in from you feeling like a victim. You're not a victim, but often when you have a four challenge, you feel like you're a victim. Uh, you're prone to panic attacks, especially when you're feeling quite emotionally overwhelmed. And you're challenged with learning to set your own personal boundaries with others, you know, because the challenge four number struggles with others a little bit. You should be a little bit more rational and have a bit more of a practical outlook towards life. Don't be in the clouds and, 
you know, thinking that everything will just be all right if you brush it under the carpet. It won't be. You need focus. You need to cope with, you need to, you need goals. You need to cope with focus and direction and persevere and achieve and get things done. Take a bigger share of the workload and don't be lazy. So showing those more positive aspects of the four is what you're working towards if you're a challenge number four. Challenge number five. So this number brings indecisiveness. Of course, it's a very scattered, scattered number. It's also quite argumentative and can be quite drama queen and ill-tempered. You can be unreasonable, emotional, and totally temperamental, okay, when, you, when you're showing the negative side of the five. You need to control your irritable nature to be able to make strong bonds with others. Otherwise, people aren't going to be around you if you're just stroppy and drama queen all the time. You're very impulsive by nature, and you get into trouble a lot. You don't think about the consequences of your actions and the things you do because they tend to come out of your mouth and you tend to do things and then you think, oh, you haven't really thought of that one through because um, of your impulsive nature, you know, and you're going to evade because you're impulsive. You're going to have to often evade responsibility and rather than committing to the healthy and constructive change that you're here to do. Um, so the five can be a bit skittish and scattered and run away from all types of responsibility when you're showing the five on the negative. You tend to be unstable because you're impulsive um, and you need to learn to thwart any feelings of irresponsibility and control your, your impulsive nature a bit because, you know, you can do a lot of damage if you're not thinking before you're acting. That's part of the challenge in the number five. You'll want to try everything at least once. Um, you're chaotic, you can be uncontrollable. You may have had problems fulfilling your education or staying in a stable career because of your chaos, before your, because of your uncontrollable, changeable nature. You might struggle to focus on any one thing for any length of time because fives don't really like to stay in one place or do the same thing for very long. You need to rein in your recklessness and your reckless tendencies and monitor your impulsive behavior when you have a challenge number five. You need to manage and be more controlled and more stable in the way you express yourself. Change is inevitable unless you've, but you've got to handle it and you're good at dealing with change, but you've got to handle it in a useful way. In a, in a thoughtful, meaningful, and controlled way so that change is good for you. So you use it in the best possible way. You can be impatient and restless because the five likes to keep moving. And you have a restless desire for personal freedom, which doesn't help you when it comes to committing and focusing to any one thing because you want to be free. Um, so that can be a difficulty for you when it's your challenge number. You've got to you i mean you're a freedom lover when you're a channel number five and you can't easily be bound or held down um but you've got to learn to balance that a little bit more you need to be held down a little bit in order to build relationships and build any kind of security for yourself so you need to learn to balance your need for variety and change and and flux with your with your need to create a specialism create a stable foundation and a family and people that you love in your life you know, balancing the two is going to make help you to achieve and transcend your challenge number five. You must attain freedom through self-discipline at the end of the day. Be constructive. Be focused with your use of your free time. And that will help you again your the future freedom that you desire. In adulthood, you may struggle to make concrete decisions you, due to your drama queen emotionality and the fact that you can turn your hand to anything a lot of the time or you you understand everyone's point of view a lot of the time <clears throat> and you can often feel feelings of chaos um, emotional paralysis is very common when you have a challenge five bad judgment is very common when you have a challenge five so keep a note of that um, you're highly charged and your five energy negative challenge can be quite intense and sometimes you're going to feel a little crazy um, but you must mindfully become free from those limited behaviors, being mindful and being particularly mindful. It's going to be hard when you're a challenge number five, but try to always be mindful of what you're doing and the consequences of what you're doing. Become fully immersed in addiction with food 
sex, alcohol, drugs or overwork can be something that you can fall into if you're on the negative side of the five. So we need to make sure you don't do that. And you can have mental health issues and burnout and injuries and accidents from the risks that you tend to take, you know, because you're not always all that when you have a challenge number five, you're not always all that sensible in the decisions that you make. Because remember, you're unstable, you're impulsive and you try anything at least once. Even if it half kills you or loses you all your money, this is what you're dealing with with the challenge five. So you're working towards being a bit more stable, um, emotionally balanced, not being so argumentative, being able to communicate and create bonds with others, committing to something that you can really focus on as a specialism. You know, this is all what you're working towards when you're a challenge number five. Challenge number six, however, is about setting two higher standards for yourself. You know, you've got to stop setting high standards for yourself and everyone else around you. The world is not meant to be a utopia as much as you'd love it to be, because if it was, we wouldn't learn anything. And there'd be no point in us coming to this planet at all to learn anything because we'd be already perfect. No, no. We're working towards perfection. We're not already there. So you're a perfectionist and you expect the same from others. And this causes you a problem. OK, it's difficult for people around you to match up to your expectations because of your 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 high standards and perfectionist nature. God, you're so fussy when you have a challenge. Number six, you're demanding, insistent authoritative at times like your own way inconsiderate towards others sometimes you know because you're so thinking about your own ideas and imperfections and what you're disappointed about you know and it can cause you sometimes to be a bit inconsiderate towards others and it can cause you you know when your ideals and your perfections aren't met you can be quite demanding um, angry even and disappointed that your ideals or your perfections haven't been met and it can be with yourself with others and the world you know and you can be disappointed to the point of extreme cynicism which can't be good for you which isn't good for you and you're prone to using those high standards as a benchmark for your happiness so when things don't go as you think it perfectly should then this can cause you to be really upset and disappointed with life um, because it's not the perfection that you wanted it to be and you know you've got to work towards allowing others to set their own pace for their own life um, they can live their own perfectly imperfect life okay and you need to allow people to do that to help you meet your sixth challenge you know it's not about being perfect yet otherwise there'd be no point in being here we're working towards being perfect and when we are perfect we won't be on the earth anyway because we will have ascended so if you're on this earth you're not perfect deal with it that's what you're working towards it's not what you already are and you need to stop basing your happiness on that ideal that everything's always got to be perfect because you're selling yourself short making yourself miserable judgmental and non-accepting of other people so this is something if you're a challenge six that you really really have to work hard to deal with so you're pro you allow other to set your own you know, other people have got to live their own life at your worst you can be quite the authoritarian intolerant self-righteous impatient angry that people haven't got everything you wanted perfect and your tendency during this time could be stuck in cynicism criticism and judgment of other people because they don't meet your ideals or your perfections so your challenge lies in learning embracing and practicing unconditional love and acceptance accepting the world as it is now perfectly imperfect tolerance and acceptance of other people's needs that other people need to grow in their own life too and they're going to make their own mistakes and they've got to tolerate and accept other people and other souls on this earth that too have a life path to lead as well you can create a bit of friction in relationships at times as you struggle to balance out situations, a bit dominating of others, sometimes too much, and meddling in people's lives because you think you're doing the right thing, you think you're keeping them on the right track, but often you're actually meddling too much, so you need to keep a good eye on that if your challenge number is six. But on the other side of the coin, you can be totally self-absorbed, uninterested in helping and supporting others at all so you can switch between meddling and then being totally disinterested and not helping anyone um, and you're likely to feel burdened when you have a challenge channels uh, a challenge six and overwhelmed by family obligations when you have a challenge six um, so avoid friction in your relationships by emphasizing harmony using diplomacy and acceptance of other people 
Um, and you'll be alerted when, when you're taking care of others in an unhealthy way. You know, you'll feel exhausted, people will start taking advantage, and you'll start to realize that maybe you're either doing too much or you're too self-absorbed. That's the thing with the six challenge, you either do too much and meddle when you're unbalanced, or you do absolutely nothing at all and self-absorbed. So you've got to find that balance between the two when you're a challenge number six. Um, you're learning to serve others and balance your commitments to them and the commitments to yourself, basically, to, in order to be healthy. You should not try to avoid caring for others during the sixth challenge because the sixth challenge number is asking you to have a balanced, nurturing attitude towards others. So don't avoid looking after people in your sixth challenge. This is the opportunity for you to develop yourself within your sixth challenge. And your health issues, like in the normal six energy, can be to do with your respiration and your breathing. Asthma being one of the challenges that you can go through. If you have a life path six or a challenge number six, you can have those issues. Challenge number seven. So intense emotions when you're a challenge number seven, but you don't always express them. So you can hold them inside quite a lot. <gasps> So you struggle to deal with these intense emotions. You feel the need to suppress those emotions in the presence of other people. Um, you don't want to express your real feelings. You tend to hide yourself in this sort of sense of false vanity and um, not wanting other people to see who you are because you feel that they might take the mic or they might insult you or they might think badly of you or they might ridicule you in some way. Um, so you don't express your real feelings. You keep them inside. And, you, you, you often can be a bit negative with your expression when you're uh, challenge number seven, complaining and criticizing others like the negative three can do. Um, and you can be perceived negatively by others because of that, because you often come across a, aloof and disinterested and emotionally disconnected as well. So you may express everything you say or write in a negative manner when you're showing the full negative areas of the seven. So either isolating yourself totally from the world or being unable to spend any time alone. So you've got swinging again between those two polarities, totally isolated or unable or too fearful to spend any time on your own in order to develop anything. So you've got to find that balance of like being around others and being alone so that it's healthy. OK, so you may avoid your feelings by putting up a wall of pride and aloofness, which can often make people not like you very much because they feel that you're not emotionally connecting with them. And they would be true there because you're not. Um, you face difficulties brought on by discomfort um, with your own inner thoughts and feelings and insecurities that you can impose on yourself. And it's important that you don't dwell on your own limitations. We've all got limitations, okay? And whilst you're really, really down on your limitations or you're really not um, happy in yourself, make sure you're um, delaying any commitments like marriage until these difficulties are overcome, especially with the challenge number seven, because it can be very de detrimental to your married life if you take a load of emotional baggage in with you. Um, the seven demands inner exploration. Okay, the chances of feeling alone and isolated can be quite common. With the cha with the challenge number seven, um, you could feel helpless and a victim of life that doesn't trust the world or others or anyone around them at all, unable to improve their own situation because the world is so diabolically bad. A victim of life. The seven can really feel a helpless victim of life who is unable to improve anything in their own life. And contemplating the intricacies of life and spirituality is going to be what helps you. Okay, to pull you out, out of the ma is focusing on the on your inner development, your life and spirituality and how you can develop yourself is going to help you get past all these negativity. So showing the more positive side of the seven is going to help you get rid of the negative side of the seven if you have a seven challenge number. So all that you experience is meant to hone your powers of analysis and observation and intuition and spirituality. OK, you'll be asked to trust both your analytic mind and your highly developed intuition and bring them both together. This needs to be time devoted to truly uncovering the real authentic you and expressing the real authentic you to people without fear of ridicule. You must also tend to avoid being scattered or avoiding work. You know, you want to be a bit more focused. Um, 
you know, and not overly emotional because the seven can be very scattered and overly emotional and allow that to make them ill or stop them from moving forward or becoming overly focused on money and focusing too far away from spirituality and focusing on just money and material objects. So you know, rejecting your spirituality in totality, which won't be good for you, obsessed and detached from reality, the seven can be when they're at their worst. Um, overly focused on the material world when really they're here to be more spiritual. So you need to develop faith in your own intuition, your own abilities, rather the opinion of everyone else around you. You need your own intuitive inner compass at the end of the day. And you've got to be careful that you do not withdraw into isolation and end up just taking loads of drugs and stuff because and getting all depressed about the state of the world. So you want to work towards being a more trusting person, trusting yourself and others and the world around you, being more extroverted, more accepting of other people, knowing that the soul within you is always putting you at the right place in the right time so that you can be happy and focused and knowing that you're doing the right thing because your intuition says so so you're working towards being more happy more trusting more social okay and working with others that little bit more and not not over isolating yourself okay so if you've got a challenge number seven you're working towards the more negative energies of the seven towards the more positive energies of the seven finally challenge number eight you assume that only material accumulation can provide you with satisfaction typical eight energy stuff you work too hard because you can be a bit of a workaholic, a workaholic, um, work too hard to gain that material wealth, the power and the authority and authority over others or status over others can be something that you really, really push for. But your eight challenge indicates a bit of greed, inquisitive acquisitiveness. So you like to keep gaining more and more and more and more. You perceive others by their possessions and their status and what type of car they've got or what type of clothes they have on. You know, your ability to gain status and power and money is will be at the cost of every other area of your life, including your relationships and your family. If you're not taking good care not to allow that to happen. Remember the eight, the negative side of the eight can be workaholic and they can disregard their family and their life and just focus on money and greed and acquiring more and more and more and being more powerful and being a higher status and ho, ho, ho. so you may have had difficulties surrounding money and abundance you can make it you can lose it you know it's very very much of a struggle with making money on saving money you know you can have issues with your attitude to money some people can think that rich people are criminals and some people think that poor people are just unworthy. And, you know, money is just energy at the end of the day. And we need to have a good and healthy attitude towards money and finances. You know, you might have difficulty in gaining money, power and status. Because remember, it's a challenge number for you. And you could be like running after that money, status and power for, to the exclusion of everything else in your life. So you don't build good relationships and you can still end up being unsuccessful at the end of it if you haven't got a good attitude. So focusing only on material gain at the expense of everything else is something that you should work away from, you know, and have some work life balance in your life. So you don't burn yourself out and burn all your bridges with those you love. You're being called upon to earn money, status and power, but with a strict sense of ethics and philanthropy. So you don't screw each other over. You don't screw others over. And you've got to take rest and spend time with other key members of your family as well. You know, you're, you're supposed to be making money. You're supposed to be successful and you either make it or you lose it at the end of the day. But again, you've got to find balance between your work and your life, you know. Um, and it could be a time of your life, your challenge number eight, if you were, if you've got a good attitude towards it, could be the most successful time in your life. Um, and in a time where you're experiencing the greatest financial success, if you have a good attitude towards money and abundance um, at your peak, your financial and spiritual abundance is high and you give it to everyone else you know you use your financial abundance as a tool to help others and your emotional abundance as a tool and your spiritual ability as a tool to help others to also become abundant you're being called upon to where am i i've missed some out so you be a time of success um giving your financial success to others 
Um, sometimes, though, you can choose positive. You know, it's about achievement for the challenge number eight as well. And sometimes when you're really struggling on the negative side, the eight challenge number can choose poverty and homelessness um, or other ways to achieve, to avoid achievement in their life. Um, achievement is expected during this period of challenge. But of course, because it's an eight challenge, you're gonna struggle to bring that achievement forward. Um, it can either be overly achievement like workaholic or not achieving at all and being sitting on the streets and doing nothing, you know, so your, achievement is expected, but balanced non workaholic achievement is needed. OK, you're being called upon to think big, step up to the plate and get it done. But again, don't forget other people and other things in your life. Your eight challenge also signals that you need to stop giving away your power to other people. You know, the challenge number eight can mean you're either over aggressive or you're subordinated or stepped on by other people. It's about finding balance between your personal power so that you have charisma. So you don't stamp on other people and be dominant, but you don't allow other people to stamp on you either. You have a balanced sense of personal power, which will give you amazing charisma. Um, so you need to, you can give away your personal power when you're a challenge number eight, or you can be overly powerful towards other people when you're a challenge number eight. You must embrace your sense of personal empowerment and learn to empower others that little bit more in a balanced way though. Focus on other aspects of life, as including your relationships with family and friends, and make sure you still relax and enjoy life. Okay, don't work too hard and don't focus too hard on the, on the work and money and abundance. Don't forget the people in your life. You need to make sure you're engaging with your authentic self, with ethics and integrity and looking after others and acting without greed or malice. You need to be looking after other people, not hurting other people, and sharing your abundance, not hoarding your abundance. Now, I hope you found my challenge number video useful. I'm, um, I have some courses on Udemy that I've uploaded and one that I'm just about to upload very soon, which will teach you how to read um, for other people. Basically, you can be a numerologist and read their numbers and give them a full reading confidently if you take my next course that I'm about to upload. Um, if you'd like a reading from me, please send me an email or you know, message me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn or Twitter. And if you haven't liked my video, give that a smash, please like my video, subscribe because liking and subscribing really helps me. And make sure you, if you're interested, which I hope you are, if you subscribe, click the bell icon and that will keep you up to date with all my latest uploads. So if you'd like a reading, please send me an email or contact me on social media check out Udemy. I'm going to put links to my Udemy course in the description box. And if you'd like to request a video, please contact me. You can send me an email. You can put a comment in the, in the comment box of one of my videos. However you want to contact me, it's fine. I love to hear from you guys. But as ever, I want you guys to trust the soul within you. I hope you're doing okay, Rachel. I hope you're following your passion, son. Hope to speak to you soon. Bye.